Nicole Scotty from Mobile Geeks, and today I'm gonna to be doing a huge browser roundup. Now, you can download as many apps as you want, but you're gonna to have to face the fact that on a tablet, the browser is a huge part of the experience. So I'm gonna be looking at the Nexus 10 running Android, and I'm gonna be looking at Chrome, and then I'm gonna be doing uh, iPad 4 running Safari, and Acer W510 running Internet Explorer. The reason why I've chosen those three browsers on those three tablets is because I'm picking the native browser for the operating system. Now I know there's a lot of other options out there for browsers and all of you Dolphin fans and Opera fans out there, you're just going to have to deal with the fact that we're going for the operating system and its native browser. So let's take a closer look at the experience on these three tablets and these three browsers. So why don't we check out opening pages. Now I only have two hands so you're going to have to use your imagination for that being an exact time for opening, but surprisingly, uh, Internet Explorer tended quite well. Um, now, why don't we do pinch to, uh, tap to zoom? So I, I quite like the way that Internet Explorer handled that because it cut out the side column and went directly to the article. Now, I think that these pages are done loading, so let's zoom back out and scroll right to the bottom. Oh, well, that didn't go very well for that one. So that's quite jittery. I'm not really digging the way that that's for now. Let's check in and explore. Very smooth. There we go. After it's have to let it load a little bit longer. All right, now let's check out tabs. So now on both Chrome and Safari, we can open and 35 tabs, I think I counted. So please keep on doing this. You can kind of see, you can, you can have a lot of tabs open. I think it's about 35 was my count. So then it just, this one stops. Oh, well, Chrome is still going, there we go. Either it's, yeah, it's just frozen. So, yeah, it caps out at about 35. So let's reopen that as well. This one actually stops. But um, if we check out opening tabs here, it's not quite as seamless. You need to scroll down each and every time. But what is nice is when you open the tab, it has your frequent um, websites here and then it automatically shows up your favorite. So when I was doing the benchmarking, I've loaded them all up here. But the kind of dis the disadvantage to this browser is that you can only have eight tabs open. Oh, sorry, 10 tabs. That's 10. Five and five. That's 10. So now if I open one more, you can see it's just pushed the New York Times right out of there, which not cool really. So let's just reopen that page. Uh, one of the things that I do like also about this browser is if you pulled up this, hit the dots here, it automatically does private browsing, the same as Chrome where it has the incognito tab here. Safari doesn't have this option uh, for the specific web pages. What you have to do is you have to go all the way into the settings, uh, Safari, and then turn private browsing on and off. People. So it's for every single web page, every single site. Um, whereas he, on both of these browsers, you can definitely kind of pick and choose which site you want to go incognito for. So let's just check how the New York Times goes from landscape to portrait. It's quite nice. And Safari, let's head back in here. Close off some of these pages, actually. All right. And now let's check Chrome. Let's scroll right to the top. Also very quick. I think that Internet Explorer had the uh, longest pause. Let's just see that one more time. 
Although it is nice the way it kind of shrinks in. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, Chrome uh, has been making a, quite a big deal about the fact that your Chrome browser on your desktop, your tablet, and your phone, as long as you're signed into your Google account, you'll be able to um, have your browsing history, which is very nice. So you can actually pull up your other devices here and see which websites you've been going to on all of your different devices. Now, Safari has iCloud tabs. This is the best that they can do. They're actually offering uh, the open browser on any of your Apple devices. Now, we don't have any other Apple devices in the office except for the iPad mini. So if you do have Safari downloaded onto any of your computers, you would be able to use iCloud to check open tabs. But you need to install iCloud, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. This does not have any options for that, which sucks. Um, so as far as I can tell, this is definitely not something that you can uh, load onto. And actually, this is Internet Explorer 10 that comes on Windows 8. If you're running a Windows 7 system, you can only get up to Internet Explorer 9 currently. We should be seeing Internet Explorer 10. So you're actually going to be running different versions of Internet Explorer if you're on Windows 7. Um, but even as of now, you still can't. Um, share your browsing history between devices. So yeah, that's just been a quick look at some of the different features of each of these browsers. The one thing that's clear after taking a closer look at these browsers is that Chrome is really feature packed and Internet Explorer does not have any device integration. So if you're, if you're using a Windows phone or any other phone, you definitely can't get that device integration. If you are using Chrome, you can download that onto an Apple product. You can download that onto an Android product. So you do get that cross compatibility, whereas with Internet Explorer, you don't really have much love at all. But for reading websites, I do have to admit that I do like the framing on the tap to zoom. I do like the pinch to zoom. I do like the overall browser experience for plain, straight up, basic reading and site surfing. Um, Safari, it's great. I'm personally not a fan, never really been drawn to it. But if you do like iOS, the integration with its ecosystem and iCloud is kind of nice. So I think that picking a browser is definitely a very personal thing. There is no, with these three anyways, I think the speed and optimization for each of them is is on par. I mean, yes, you can niggle with benchmarks on which one's quicker, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So we're going to take a closer look at all the benchmarks on these devices. Uh, I'm going to explain what each benchmark is focusing on. And again, we're going we're to discover that there is no one clear definite winner after we run all the benchmarks, because different benchmarks produce different winners. So anyways, it's a, it's, a really inter it's, a, it's a really interesting roundup. I'm really enjoy kind of seeing the different features of, of each of these browsers. So here are the benchmarks. BrowserMark is designed to compare the performance of any browser on any internet-enabled device, including desktop, notebook, tablets, and smartphones. For years, BrowserMark has been considered the gold standard in performance measurement. The software was designed to measure browser performance in the context of JavaScript, HTML5, WebGL, CSS, and a few more. So you, you can see that Internet Explorer finishes first, but it has the lowest score because it is a desktop browser. Um, the other two register as mobile devices, but Internet Explorer 10 actually registers only as a desktop. So we're not going to be able to actually compare figure to figure on this one. Um, but what we do see is that uh, Safari does beat Chrome, and you're going to have the full desktop experience on your Internet Explorer Windows 8 tab. SunSplider is a JavaScript benchmark developed by Apple's WebKit team in 2007. It has a focus on real-world JavaScript uses, such as text manipulation and encryption. SunSpider is considered by many to be the most comprehensive browser benchmark available. But as browsers have become faster, the test is now seen as too easy by many. The clear winner here is Internet Explorer. Peacekeeper Benchmark is a browser benchmark from FutureMark. The test covers a lot more than just the JavaScript engine, and it gives a good overall view of how fast a particular browser is from the front-facing end. You can see Safari kills it and nearly doubles Internet Explorer. 
Kraken Benchmarks is Mozilla's JavaScript benchmark tool. It's a very demanding test like SunSpider. It focuses on the realistic browser workloads. You can see that Internet Explorer trails in at the very end, uh, followed by Safari, and then Chrome actually wins it on this one. RoboHornet Benchmark is kind of the new kid on the browser benchmarking block. It's Google's version of a modular, independent, and open source benchmark, comprising of tests created and voted on by developers and designers. RoboHornet is currently in alpha testing, so it's very much a work in progress. And as such, you should probably take the results with a uh, pinch of salt. That being said, the test is totally worth keeping an eye on, and it's just another metric by which you can test the modern browser. Interestingly, Apple Safari comes in dead last on this test, with nearly double the score of Chrome and Internet Explorer. What is also interesting is that Internet Explorer actually beats Chrome by just a hair. Octane is a JavaScript benchmark from Google. So it takes a look at JavaScript usage scenarios uh, from 2D and 3D graphics rendering and uh, in browser code compilation. Not really surprising since it is a Google test, uh, Octane kills it on the Chrome browser followed by Safari and IE comes in dead last. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope you learned a little bit about different browsers and their strengths and weaknesses. I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks, taking a look at browsing. Yeah.